Celebrity deaths, serial killers, cop shows. Why are people so fascinated with true crime? For author, podcast host, documentarian, and tour guide Scott Michaels, he's created an entire career out of it. My name is Scott, and I own Yearly Departed Tours in Hollywood. I've been called the Perez Hilton of the afterlife <laughs> because I do like to dig up the dirt, too. I started Dearly Departed Tours in 2005. We focus on a dark subject matter, but our focal point is the victims. These people are remembered not just as victims of their crimes. A person will die two deaths. The first time they'll die is when they physically die. The second time is the last time their name is spoken out loud. And that's exactly the niche that we fill. They are remembered, and their names are said out loud. It's Dearly Departed Tours is a lighthearted look at the dark side of Hollywood. When people come to our museum, it's sort of a classroom in a weird way. We have a brassiere that belonged to Sharon Tate. We have Mae West's dentures, which is pretty weird. It brings a smile to my face to have her, literally, her smile in my hands. I have a tile from the swimming pool that Brian Jones uh, drowned in. I have a piece of the floor that Bobby Kennedy landed on when he was shot in in the Ambassador Hotel. We also have about eight people's cremated remains and two animals, two dogs here. We try to make sure that everybody is happy here. We care a great deal about that. When you take the Dearly Departed tour, you're gonna to see all sorts of things. I mean, you'll see a cemetery, restaurants where people had their last supper, uh, street corners where somebody passed away. So this house on our left is the home where Mr. and Mrs. LaBianca were killed late in the night of August 9th, 1969. I think sometimes people are interested in these things because sometimes they're so shocking that someone is capable of doing things to each other. The tone of everything has changed. When I started doing this 25 years ago, there was no internet. You don't have to hide your interest anymore. It's brought people out of shame. It's sort of giving human faces and life to those victims. Everyone knows who killers are. Everyone knows their names more so than their victims. That's sort of sad. Death itself isn't necessarily a beautiful thing, but I think the tributes are. The point is they're honored and they're not forgotten. And that's the most important thing. Don't ever forget. Everyone, please welcome Scott Michaels to the show. And Scott, there's no doubt that there seems to be this pervasive fascination with death. And, and you described your own fascination. How did that start for you? I grew up, I was sort of exposed to this from a young age. I grew up in Detroit. I grew up on an intersection, on a corner at an intersection where fatal accidents happened. It was a dangerous traffic corner. And it was something that, you know, it was a normal part of our life. I didn't know it to be any different, to, you know, people be killed in front of my house. Over the years, uh, I've known people that have been murdered, about five people that have been murdered personally knew them. And I'm not saying that to be dangerous, it's just the way it was. I didn't know anything differently. So I was sort of desensitized from an early age. Now, uh, my mom, a homemaker raising four kids, she wasn't, uh, she was looking for an outlet, so she, she painted, you know, she wasn't an artist, you know, she just liked doing this as a hobby, and she made mosaics. And it wasn't until much later on that I realized it was, uh, it, she, she was making this wonderful Three Kings mosaic that is made out of car accident glass. Now, it wasn't contrived, it wasn't, let's do something really weird here. It was something like, I need mirror, I need, I need white glass. This is back when headlights were glass and taillights were red glass. She said, I need red glass. So we go out into the corner and pick up this, uh, the red glass out of the, out of the gutter and give it to her and she made it. So it was sort of, you know, just a part of our life growing up. I was desensitized or exposed to it from an early age. Mm. And I, I would think business is good, right? Here in Los <laughs> Angeles? I mean, people can't get enough of these of these stories. Yeah, the tone has changed most certainly since, uh, uh, you know, as the, as the tape said, it was 25 years ago when I started doing this and people were literally looking down their nose at us. Uh, there was a time when we would pass Jimmy Stewart's house on a regular basis and Jimmy Stewart come out and wave to us. He was a really nice guy. Then he came, it came to the time where he died and we were driving by that day and the press were outside and they were like, you're monsters, you're monsters. It's like, well, we're, you're the ones that are jumping on the bandwagon, not me. You know, this is what I do. And Mr. Stewart was great with us. So uh, it's it just, the, the whole tone has changed. You used to have to hide your interest. Uh, they, somebody told me once you used, used to hide your true crime magazines in the back of your grocery bag. And now there's 24-hour cable networks devoted strictly mm -hmm. to it. So, yeah, it's changed. 
Why are we so drawn to all of this? <laughs> I know, you know, Scott, you, I can totally see your passion. And yet this type of fascination isn't totally new. It actually dates back to the 19th century where people were visiting morgues in the Victorian and Romanticism era. But now, of course, it's taken on a whole other edge. It's become a form of art. And when I hear about your story as a child, this idea of infusing this idea of mortality, we all have to deal with it. We're all going to die. There's an existential issue here that we're trying to contact. But this type of tourism, sometimes called grief or dark tourism, it gives us a safe way and a controlled way to contemplate death and to understand death and almost to make contact with the people that we've lost. And so I can see it as even sometimes being empowering or therapeutic for people. And you're, so these tours, you have a specialty, the Helter Skelter Tour. Right. I've been obsessed with uh, the Tate LaBianca crime, or most people know him as the Manson murders, uh, since I was a kid. Because I, I really do think that crime changed America. It changed everyone's comfort level. Because up until that Friday night, uh, in August of 1969, you thought you were safe in your own bed, and you weren't anymore. You know, Abigail Folger was reading a book in bed, and in... 30 minutes she was on the front lawn of the house of 28 stab wounds and the case went unsolved for four months i guess your expertise is known out there i guess quentin tarantino his latest movie once upon a time in in hollywood they consulted you to help sort of put these pieces together uh on that uh yeah. sharon tate roman polanski he, um, he t t Mr. Tarantino saw my movie and had me in. I figured he's, we'd have a room of 20 people, you know, but they ushered me into his office and it was just he and I for a couple of hours. I took him out in my car and we went out to the different locations and it was really interesting because he's just as much a, a nerd about this as I am. So he was coming over to me and was saying, guess what happened over here? And I said, you know, what was on TV that night when this was going on? And he says, you know, this is what was going on over there. So he, we were sharing each other, uh, knowledge with each other and uh, had an enthusiasm for it. And so you're on to something here. And, and, and I love that you're... I don't want to say victim focused because it's not always victims. We all die, mm -hmm. but but I, I I really I love what you're doing. I think yeah. you're you're bringing people to life even after they're dead. Really cool. And Scott, I have a really important question for you that affects all of us who work here. You said that the Paramount Law is haunted. No. <laughs> you no. said it's haunted. We're scaring Dr. Travis. Don't go there. Oh no. But please tell us why you think it's haunted and why Dr. Travis and I and Dr. Orden cannot be well, here I mean, after here, sunset. Here in stage <laughs> stage thirty, I mean a lot went on here. I mean, I think the spirits are gone father, I love Lucy, Manic, Soul Train. Red a lot Fox, of stuff happened yeah, Red right Fox here. Died on this lot, and you know Heather O'Rourke uh, from Happy Day. Well, Poltergeist. She haunts this, the uh, sound stage across the street. But we are literally right now on cemetery property, former cemetery property. Because Hollywood Cemetery, which is just over the other right. side of the wall, this this it used to be twice as big as it is right now. Uh, there in was the, just a uh, gust of wind that went by. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> in the early 19-teens, the cemetery was literally cut in half and sold. And this half was cemetery property at wow. one point. So should we... How shall we protect ourselves? Just be nice. Just, just be, be nice? nice. <laughs> Wish them well if we see them around the corridor at night? Okay. <laughs> go on the tour. Yeah, go on the tour. Well, I think it was, it was important, though, that, that you, I'm, I thank you for portraying me the way you are. I appreciate that. Uh, it's important to me that we give back. And, and that's what we do. Uh, we, of course, have a little cemetery of seven people in our, in our shop, but we also uh, mark gravestones once a year. We provide a marker for a celebrity who's been buried without a marker, because a lot of times they, you know, the motion picture country home will bury them without markers. So, uh, uh, so James Anderson is a Western actor. We just uh, will be unveiling his, his gravestone in about, uh, about two weeks. So yeah, it just, it's, it's making it good. We donate on a regular basis to the Justice for Homicide Victims. We have a Karen Carpenter tour that we, uh, we offer once a year, and we donate to the National Organization for Eating Disorder. So we try to even things out karmically. We are exploiting, uh, you know, ultimately not very nice stories, but, uh, but I think that we try to make good. But I do think it's important that we always honor those who have died, those who are victims, and, and I think that's an important piece of this, and I applaud you for, for thinking about those victims. Thank you. If you are watching and you want to donate to the families of homicide victims, go to our website, thedoctorstv.com, to learn more about how you can do so. Scott, thanks for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll be right back. You heard me.